Okay, so our story starts with a character called The Original, whose IQ was so immeasurably huge that he managed to discover the Backyard, which is a parallel dimension that governs everything that exists. Using this discovery, he decides to create a robot called the Universal Will, which is tasked with bringing true happiness to mankind, but it gets confused and becomes the main antagonist instead. Are you with me so far? Apparently, at the turn of the new millennium, Y2K actually happens, and every single electronic device in the world malfunctions in an event known as the Dawn of Revival, which plunges all of humanity into chaos. Fortunately, there are five geniuses known as the Apostles who knew that Y2K was going to happen and offered a new energy source, magic. A few years later, a researcher who at this point is only known as That Man kickstarts the Gear Project alongside his colleagues Frederick and Aria. It doesn't last very long. This research team entirely falls apart when That Man uses the Flame of Corruption to turn Frederick into the prototype Gear. Meanwhile, in an effort to prevent the United States from militarizing Gear technology, That Man decides to militarize Gear technology. The result of this is Justice, a mobile suit Gundam built on the body of Frederick's girlfriend with the ability to control any and all future Gears created. However, thanks to the Universal Will, Justice becomes evil and gathers an army of Gears to instigate a 100-year-long war against humanity called the Crusades. Her first mission is to convert all citizens of Japan into antimatter gears to expand her army. That man looks at this and is like, oh shit, that's not good, and his solution is to blow up the entire country of Japan. After many years of battle, Kai Kisk's army, with the help of Frederick, who now goes by the name Soul Bad Guy, seals justice inside a dimensional prison which puts an end to the Crusades. However, the prison only holds for about five years before weakening, which brings us to the very first Guilty Gear video game. In this game, Soul Bad Guy joins a tournament that is looking for the strongest fighters who can defeat justice, but he discovers that the whole thing is a hoax orchestrated by a person of indistinguishable gender named Testament. Testament revives justice using themselves as a sacrifice, and Soul starts throwing hands. Yeah, Soul kinda whoops Justice's mechanical ass. But remember, Justice was built on top of Soul's girlfriend, so now he just has to live with the fact that he took the life of his one true love. Sucks for him, I guess. And this brings us to our next game, Guilty Gear X. Guilty Gear. Zex. What? Nothing happens in this one, but it does set the stage for Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus R, where Kai Kisk becomes one of the three kings for a fictional nation known as Illyria, and also falls in love with Justice's daughter, Dizzy. This leads directly into the fourth game in the series, Guilty Gear 2, Overture, where Kai and Dizzy have a son named Sin, but because Kai would rather be a king than raise a child, he gives his son to Soul Bad Guy. While out on a mission, Soul and Sin get attacked by an army of backyard creatures led by a woman named Valentine, who seeks to kidnap Dizzy and use her DNA to unlock the cube, which is a location in the backyard that allows any individual to control all of reality itself. Soon after, Sin experiences firsthand what it's like to have daddy issues, which causes him to run away in anger. But this backfires because Valentine kidnaps Sin and plans to use him to unlock the cube instead of Dizzy. Soul goes through a magical portal that takes him directly into the backyard and at the last second stops Valentine from entering the cube. Soul also manages to destroy the key to the cube, thus compromising Valentine's entire plan, putting an end to what would become known as the Baptisma 13 incident. Afterwards, Soul begins assembling a new weapon known as the Junkyard Dog from the pieces of a much more powerful weapon called the Outrage in the pachinko slot machine game called Guilty Gear Vast Edge XT, which takes place three months prior to the events of Guilty Gear X Surge Sign. In this game, a a girl named Ramlethal declares war on the entire world, but then gets immediately captured by Soul. But then she reveals that she was only a decoy so that the leaders of the United Nations known as the Conclave can enact their true plan, which is to activate the cradle over the city of Babylon, causing an explosion and killing everybody. Why did they do that? Uh, well, you see, well, uh, um... Soul and Kai learn from an elite assassin named Zato-1 that the cradle is actually a teleporting spaceship which houses the Conclave itself who have been warping back and forth between the backyard and reality this whole time. Apparently, the Conclave is planning to fuse their souls with the Corpse of Justice and take over the world. The Conclave position themselves under a giant fucking lightning bolt and are ready to begin the revival process, but then Dizzy thwarts their operation with a... magic... 
thing. I would tell you what that magic thing is, but this is what I wrote in my notes, and I mean, I mean, I fucking wrote this shit, and I have no idea what it means. Now, up to this point, I've neglected to mention this girl, named Elfelt. She literally just showed up to Kai's doorstep one day, and has been chilling with the Soul Bad Guy crew ever since. Well, it turns out that she's actually evil, and reveals herself to be a traitor, but not actually, because she was really being possessed by the Universal Will, who happens to be the Sanctus Maximus Populi, known as Ariels, who is also known as the leader of the entire world. Next game. While all that shit's happening, a sexy magical witch lady named Eno awakens that man's newest creation, Jacko Valentine. Apparently, Jacko holds one half of the soul of a woman named Arya Hale, aka Soul Bad Guy's former girlfriend who got turned into this asshole. Meanwhile, Soul and his team are on a mission to find and save Alpha from the clutches of the Universal Will. He learns from that man that this whole time, the Universal Will's master plan was to fuse Alpha with justice in order to create an actual perfect human being. Doing so will bring about something known as the Absolute world, which is the result of two quantum particles appearing simultaneously within the backyard, causing both the backyard and reality to merge for a split second, thus leading to the end of the entire world. In the Guilty Gear universe, this phenomenon is what killed the dinosaurs. So yeah, we don't really want that. In addition to saving the world, that man also grants Soul an opportunity to revive his long-dead girlfriend, Arya. Her soul currently resides in both Jacko and Justice, so if you combine the two, you get a whole ass waifu. But this process is extremely risky and involves firing a giant laser directly at the both of them. So that's exactly what they do. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. The laser is just not strong enough. So they fire the laser directly at Soul so that he can use his weapon, the Junkyard Dog, to amplify the output of the laser just enough to finally complete the fusion process. With Justice destroyed and Aurea revived, the crisis is averted, and the Universal Will is taken into custody. When the dust finally settles, Soul and that man have one more meeting before parting ways. That man, hiding away in the shadows for so long, finally takes off his hood and reveals himself to be... A cat boy, who goes by the name of Oscar R. Kreutz. And you know what that means? It's time for Guilty Gear Strive, bitches! Three weeks after the events of Exerd, Eno breaks into the prison cell of the Universal Will and takes directly from her boobies a man named Happy Chaos. You see, at some point in time, Happy Chaos stole half of Eno's powers, which is why she wants him to give her powers back so she could become a god. Happy Chaos just thinks this would be really funny, so he agrees to work with her. Meanwhile, Oscar turns himself in to the United States government and is personally escorted by President Vernon to the White House, where he can go into hiding in the basement. He does this right before the G4 Summit event, which sounds like the title for a Smash tournament, but is actually an event where the top world leaders gather at the White House to discuss politics, and more importantly, where White House security is top-notch. Asuka needs this kind of security because he is currently protecting a very powerful magic book known as the Tome of Origin, which Eno needs in order to become a god. Meanwhile, Happy Chaos and Eno determine that, since Soul Bad Guy has saved the world on multiple occasions, they should probably find a way to prevent him from doing that. Fortunately for them, Happy Chaos has prepared a trump card, a samurai vampire named Nagoriyuki, who's hidden directly underneath this residential apartment building. He could just walk in and make his way to the basement, or... <clears throat> Moving on, Eno then lets herself get caught by the police, which was part of their plan, but pretty much everybody finds it a little suspicious that this all-powerful character got arrested by a bunch of nobodies, so they're going to have Soul present at the White House for extra security just in case Eno is planning something. But none of that matters, because when G4 actually begins, Happy Chaos mind controls all of the White House guards to be under his command, and now the White House is completely defenseless. Happy Chaos walks into the G4 meeting room and politely asks President Vernon to take him to where Asuka is located. Luckily, Soul rushes in and punches Happy Chaos in the face, and then he books it out of there alongside the President. Happy Chaos then says fuck it and decides to activate a previously classified government project known as Tir Nanog, spelled like this, which reveals that the White House is actually a giant floating airship, which is now en route to crossing the borders of Old Mexico, potentially leading to the White House getting shot down and starting a war. It suddenly dawns on Asuka that the amount of knowledge and magical power required to perform all this crazy shit can only lead to one truth. Happy Chaos is actually the creator of magic himself, the original. Me
Meanwhile, Biken is plotting her revenge against Happy Chaos for killing her friends and family all those years ago during the Crusades, which attracts the interest of this small 12-year-old girl named Delilah, whose brother was also killed by Happy Chaos Asterisk and wants to help Biken kill the man. Biken doesn't exactly condone 12-year-olds conducting assassination attempts, so Delilah leaves to take revenge by herself and attempts to teleport straight to Happy Chaos, but fails and inadvertently creates a super high-density info space bubble directly above a massive city that can explode at any moment. Biken is in the middle of assessing the situation when she is met with Ramlethal, who's a good girl now and was actually appointed to be the head of the Illyrian Brigade, all because she ate a burger. Biken and Ramlethal enter a magical door portal, which brings them on board an airship alongside May, April, Sin, and Faust. If there's any team that could prevent a crisis, it's this one. Using a very long rope, dragons, and a big door, the team manages to slice the info bubble in half, preventing the city from exploding and saving the lives of over 120,000 citizens. Biken and Delilah completely give up on revenge, and Faust does, um, whatever that is. But who gives a shit about all that, because the city is saved, and with that crisis out of the way, let's go ahead and check back in on the White House. What is he doing? The US Pentagon decides that the only solution to stop the White House from entering Mexico is to shoot it down, but they can't do that until Sol, Vernon, and Asuka are escorted off the aircraft. Conveniently, the room that Asuka is currently occupying is actually an escape pod, so Sol and Vernon start heading down there, and along the way, Vernon reveals himself to be a cyborg. Asuka attempts to use his epic magic skills to redirect the White House away from Mexico, but is interrupted when Happy Chaos telepathically instigates a magic duel to the death. At first, Happy Chaos appears to get absolutely bodied, but then he's like, wait a second, I'm a god, and then proceeds to go absolutely sicko mode on Asuka's ass. Meanwhile, Sol and Vernon end up running into Nagoriyuki, who has just been chilling in the White House this whole time. Sol takes this as an opportunity to get Nagoriyuki to tell him what Happy Chaos' weakness is, but then accidentally kills him in the process. Whoops! Still, they manage to make it to the escape pod, but upon opening the door, Happy Chaos teleports inside and locks himself in with Asuka. But then Asuka comes out with his Uno reverse card all like, Fuck you, I was never actually in the escape pod, bitch! They eject Happy Chaos off the White House and redirect the airship to safety. Crisis averted, yet again. Phew! Glad that's over. But suddenly, the tone shifts as Asuka decides it's finally time to rid the world of Soul Bad Guy. He removes the flame of corruption from Soul, leaving behind but an ordinary man, Frederick Bolsara. The curtains finally close on a story 23 years in the making, and the dawn of a new mankind shall begin. But wait, because it turns out that the happy chaos that was ejected from the airship was fake and actually just some random guy that looked like happy chaos while the real happy chaos was just sitting there, chilling. Happy chaos takes directly from Asuka's boobies the Tome of Origin, which allows Eno to finally transform into a god and do literally anything she wants. And the worst part is, Sol can't do shit about it because he's just a regular dude now. The first thing Eno does with her newfound godhood is reenact the end of Evangelion. Which, I mean, fair enough, I would probably do the same thing if I were a god. But then she says that, with the flame of corruption no longer implanted in anyone, the only thing that can defeat her now is its counterpart, the Scales of Juno. But who the hell is implanted with the Scales of Juno? Well, the Scales of Juno were originally implanted into Justice, but with the power of family trees, bullshit, god, and anime, the Scales of Juno were miraculously passed down genetically to none other than Kai Kisk. Kai, with the necessary tools in hand, confidently stands up to Eno and prepares himself to protect the entire world in the ultimate battle of man versus god. The roar of the he fails. After all hope seems lost, President Vernon comes strolling out with a bin of nuclear batteries capable of obliterating the entire world, which were kind of just lying around in the Oval Office. Okay then. Surprise, Nagoriyuki is not actually dead, and conveniently tells Sol that Eno's weak point is in her right hand. Using this knowledge, Sol fucking machine guns those nuclear batteries all over Eno's right palm, completely eviscerating her from this planet and finally putting an end to the stupid ass overly complicated storyline. The story ends with everyone doing their own thing. Sol starts building rocket ships in his backyard, Kai gives up on being a king, Happy Chaos comes back somehow, and Asuka pursues his new goal and true intentions throughout the entire series, starting his own Spotify podcast. I will now begin my first radio broadcast. This is all new to me, so I'm afraid I may not be very eloquent.